Today we're going to finish our study of the book of Ecclesiastes with Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Well, we were encouraged last week in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 to find joy in uh, planting seeds of joy in others and by being generous and by doing good, even when we have no idea what's going to come of it. But it begs the question, why should we do that? Why is it good to do good? And why should joy even be something that we long for? Why, why should we, I mean, according to the atheist, um, if they really think through things logically, joy is no better than pain. I mean, they're both just electrical impulses in the brain, and one shouldn't be commended or uh, believed is, is better than the other. So the question is, why should we do good? Uh, why should we pursue joy at all? Uh, this, this question is really what the, the book of Ecclesiastes is all about. It drives towards this question. What's the point of doing anything? What's the point? Why should we live one way rather than another? Ecclesiastes chapter 12, starting in verse 1, says this. So remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of adversity come, and the, and the years approach when you will say, I have no delight in them. Before the sun and the light are darkened, and the moon and the stars and the clouds return after the rain, on the day when the guardians of the house tremble and the strong men stoop, uh, the women who grind grain cease because they are few, and the ones who watch through the windows see dimly. The doors of the street are shut while the sound of the mill fades, when one rises at the sound of a bird, and all the daughters of the, gr the song grow faint. Also, they are afraid of the heights and dangers on the road. The almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper loses its spring, and the caper berry has no effect. For the mere mortal is headed to his eternal home, and mourners will walk uh, around in the street. Before the silver cord is snapped, and the gold bowl is broken, and the jar is shattered at the spring, and the wheel is broken into the well, and the dust returns to the earth as it once was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Absolute futility, says the teacher. Everything is futile. Let's pray. Father, help us always to remember you. Help us to worry less about the daily grind of life and concern ourselves more with doing the good work that you've called us to. And even more, help us to rest in your work, accomplished by Jesus on the cross that we would rejoice in him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know that one friend that you have that always sounds like they're complaining even when they're happy? And if you don't have that friend, maybe you are that friend. That's okay, because actually that's what the book of Ecclesiastes is oftentimes. So in the typical style of Ecclesiastes, even when writing words of encouragement, the teacher seems to have a slightly pessimistic tone. It's mostly like a handbook for all the things that don't satisfy us in life. So it can come across as a very negative book, even though that's actually kind of the opposite of the writer's goal. His goal is to share uh, all the wisdom that he's obtained from God through his experiences um, so that we might clearly see the vain things in life, the, the hebel, as we talked about last week, the vapor that's there for a moment is short-lived, though, so that we can more clearly see past the vapor, through the vapor, and see what clearly matters, that which is substantial and real. And if you read the book of Ecclesiastes in that spirit, uh, what we just read, as well as the rest of the chapter, it's, it's actually a very optimistic passage. As he's wrapping up uh, Ecclesiastes, the teacher tells us to remember your creator in the days of your youth. While you're young, uh, it doesn't matter how old you feel. We're still very young in terms of our, our eternity. While you're young, and there are so many opportunities in life, so many dreams that you could chase after, remember your Creator. Remember that life is not about your work, but about His work. Remember that life is not about your dreams, but is about His dream. You know, we can get consumed with our, our dreams in life. We can get consumed with greed and lust, or even just the constant desire to fill our longings for happiness. But often when we get consumed by these things, we start chasing after all the things that really won't make us happy. And we end up wasting our lives. But God's dream for you is that you would be truly happy in Jesus. Truly happy in Jesus. As you trust in Him, God wants to give you this true and lasting real abundant joy.